to show emotions is one of the biggest oh yeah kind uh, of toxic traits yeah. where yeah. if you show emotions and like if you cry or if you you know and you know sometimes i find myself you know in this as well because you know i grew up you know without a physical father in the household but what i did is i tried to mimic as much of what manlyhood was was to me through oh, toxic <laughs> Just to mimic what what manliness was to me through uh, watching, you know, one of my mentors that was that was a, a man's man. You know, he grew up, you know, canning strong. This is what you do. You know, you make sure you take care of your family, everything good. Nothing's wrong with those uh, those traits. But you know, as time goes on, stuff has to kind of evolve with the times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So even still, of uh, you know, being able to show emotion, that was one of the things where you know, hey, if you show some emotion. That's a wrap. That's look, you're not and you're not taking care of business. To that, I just want to say I'm I wonder where the disconnect is. Because now, 2020, you have a lot of women saying, Hey, you guys, you can be vulnerable with me. Let me know how you feel. Show me your emotions. Because when you don't, it's an issue. And then you have men saying, Don't nobody let me show my emotions. Oh, da 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 da. And, you know, if I do it, you calling me a punk or I'm getting talked about and blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of like, well, where's the where's the disconnect at? Because you have women asking, you know, hey, be vulnerable, be this, be that, do this, show your emotions, you know, act this way with me. But then you have men who will sit up and I know this is going to be <laughs> an oxymoron, but whine and cry about not being able to show their emotions. So it's like, well, who are you surrounding yourself with? It's not the majority. Well, no, I'm not saying I'm not, it I'm, not, I'm saying I'm saying that the majority of women aren't asking. Okay. You know what I mean, that's that's my thing because I okay. think, and I think it's newer mm-hmm. in black community for women to ask that. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. it's still okay a lot in especially upper class white American upper class in general where mm-hmm. women don't care about whether or not you express emotions or not because we're worried about money. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I think that's a that that's newer in. Um, okay. African American, Hispanic, and as long People as long color. as with mel- mental health, talking about okay. those two things are becoming new. Okay. And because it's, and you know, and because like if like because people l- go through experiences. Mm-hmm. So if um if I told somebody something, a woman, and she used it against me at one point, and I tell my buddies, that experience is going to go with them, and then it's gonna be, and then it's gonna be like it's gonna be a worry. You know what right, I mean? Right. Right. So you know. He, he can he can talk to a female and she can be like oh I want to hear this one here's this right. but in the back of his mind he's always gonna pull the, at what my experience was and right me. no I get you that I, I mean? get that see because and I and I get that because I think men are like that in general because you have a lot of men who don't trust women because a girl broke their heart when they were in the fifth grade mm, you know yeah. what I mean and and that's real you know yeah I ain't you know I ain't trusted no woman when I was sixteen. Shorty did X, Y, Z. So F that, you know, so I, I, I get that and I understand that. And I, and I never, I, I don't assume it's the majority. I'm just going by what I see in my Facebook circle. So in my Facebook circle, I, I have a lot of supportive women who are, you know, Hey King, how are you? What's going on? Like Facebook statuses, trying to create a space so that men do have a place where they could be like, you know, this is what's going on. This yeah. is what's happening with me. And I, that movement in a, the movement is new. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah, definitely. It, feel, it feels very new because, again, I kind of go into the story and kind of pick off torrents is that if you, if you, if you show emotions, you are you are soft mm-hmm. in a sense, and if you soft, that translates into you can't be a man or you can't take like it's literally it just trickles down, and right. if you have Domino. a softness, you automatically you is a lot of things you are you can't do. It it has to start. With men talking to men about these things, you know what I mean. It has to. It has to start with us. I got something. And, and, and when and you like, because like, if we're comfortable sharing that things with someone we're friends with for a long time, sharing a relationship becomes a little bit easier. And I and I really hope that that starts to happen because when I bring questions and things like that to Facebook, the first thing I get met with is that's not my concern. That's not. You know, that's not really my my issue. That's not my problem. I don't, you know, like they're not, I'm not responsible, you know, things of that nature. And it's like, as a woman, I can only do so much. I can only make you feel so comfortable with me to allow you to have that space. But with the people that you are the most comfortable with, 
you have to create that space there. You have to want that space for yourself. Don't blame me for not being able to express yourself when you can't even express yourself with the people well, that you with. You, you know what's going to also be the biggest thing? And again, I'm, I'm going to make this about race is that where's the, okay, where are the, where are the black fathers in the household? Right. So you, got, you, you got, men, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you got men, you got boys being raised and they're not seeing a male figure able to show, show emotion. emotion the correct way or that they, they, their, their parents are in the older generation. So their fathers grew up not showing emotion because that's what you did back in the day. So they're even getting no imagery of a father showing emotion or they're getting an imagery of a father not showing any emotion because that's not what traditionally they were supposed to do growing up generation, uh, uh, right. the boomers. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a raise one, raise you one. So I had a conversation with uh, somebody on Facebook recently about this topic. And I, I came to the understanding that the communication wasn't, the communication evolved. And back in the day, it wasn't as good as it is now because n no one should be a crybaby or no one should be crying in public all the time. Like you just have to know how to display your emotions or who is allowed to see you at your most vulnerable state because that's not something for everyone to see. Why though? You said why? Yeah. Because allowing another, that's like letting another person into your home. You don't know. Why would you do that? Why would you not do it? Because another person will use whatever they see or whatever you tell them to their advantage against yours. Because that is a possibility. And you don't know necessarily if a person is or isn't going to do it, but it's a possibility. But that can go both ways, Suchi, because you can even be harmed or hurt from the people that you trust the most. Like that, you, like usually the people that it's you... It's a risk no matter what Yeah, you do. like usually what ends up happening is like, you know, the person that knows you the best is the person that can hurt you the most. Everybody on this table can clip my wings from me. <laughs> yeah like we have like they know me the it's best so you know what hurts and that, that, that's what i'm saying that you it's certain things like that are supposed to be in a circle with people that you believe that you trust because we gonna use uh we gonna use 40 from uh ovo so my my, my issue is when you have these conversations with people it's not, uh -huh. it's not always about, well, one is about expressing yourself, having a, a gate to let these things flow, but it's also giving people a chance to open their gate. I am very, I've always been very vocal about my personal anxiety and depression stuff with people because I am, I've always been strong enough. I was strong enough to get help in college and I've always been strong. I've been strong enough to, to, to take care of it myself. And to have a good grasp on how I feel and know when to and know when I'm in a down, when I'm in the up. So I talk to people because I don't know if they're there or if they ever will be there. So if they can talk to me about it, they get more comfortable asking for help about it. And in the long run, it will trickle, 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 trickle. And eventually that conversation goes from another person to another person to another person to someone who really needs it. And then we then we save a life through conversation. You know what I mean? That's the mindset you have to have is that if I spread this and make this a norm, I can save somebody in the long term. If someone, you know, a male a dude talks to you about his emotion, it could be like, I'm just annoyed. I'm always angry. But that can lead to I'm depressed. That can lead to I'm, I feel trapped. At least I, I can feel I'm suicidal. These yeah. conversations but, stack. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, because there's somebody. See, no, I'm not. That, and see, that's, that's different. That I'm not saying there should be no conversation at all. That's. Well, you know, you're saying that people should be selective oh, about overshare? who they're who they express themselves with that or, or display it in public. It. Like if I'm having a problem with something, I shouldn't, or like, <sighs> well, that comes, well, I see where you're going. I, I think that just comes down. That comes down to the person. Some people don't like, have a problem like, with it, you know, putting their business all out there for the world to see because they don't mind. They're okay with having, letting everybody know. Because it doesn't bother them that people know. You know, people can only hurt you with what they know if you let them. 
You know, and if a stranger yeah. knows something about me that I said publicly, it was something that I didn't care a stranger knew. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, you can share whatever you want, but it certain, like, if, if it's something that you feel is really going to hurt you in the long run, if somebody uses it against you, you probably shouldn't put that out well, in pe- the... Who does that? Yeah, that's a... Uh, uh, I don't yeah. think people do like, that, though. Well, people... So, yeah, not... Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to piggyback on a couple of things because uh like from the topic of both you um both uh friction and Mrs. Friction said um uh, cuz I'm 50/50 on it to be honest. Um and especially y'all know me like I'm emotional. But have y'all really seen me be like no. really really emotional other no. than well, I remember you know, one time you got your uh, Care Bear dirty, and you're like, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Hugs got spaghetti sauce on him. Damn! Stop it! Like for the most for the most part, like the only two emotions y'all have really seen from me are anger and frustration, frustration, <laughs> and and and, di- and disappointment. I've, seen, I've seen sadness. It, it's sadness, I've like seen petty. Well, yeah, yeah, like well, I, of course. No, oh, you running hard. And Seldomly, hard. though. We've known him for 10 years. So the amount of times we actually have seen any extreme emotions is very seldom. It, you're right. Because even... I'm, Brennan did hard times. So he's, he's, <laughs> he's, the hard, he's the hardest one at this yeah, table. Yeah, the was in timeout for years. <laughs> he's the hardest one at this table. Anyway, I let him did, talk. I did not do hard time. Let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> Do the hand, do the hand. Let him talk. Okay. Let him talk. That's, so, boy, that's that's our next comic uh, comment thing. Who you think's been in prison the longest out of the five of us? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> comment <laughs> below <laughs> in the video. You oh, will bro. not get this right. <laughs> you will be wrong. You will be so wrong. Anyway, but you know, um, uh, the other day I posted. You know, I was sharing stuff on Facebook, and you know, they had the stupid little thing where it says like, you know, a list of sixty questions. Give me a number, and I answer the question, and and. And Britt, you literally asked me what was the uh, oh, yeah. the question was like who was the last, last person, person I cried to, mm-hmm. and I had to think about that for a minute because I'm just like I don't really cry in front of a whole lot of people, and then I'm like little, the last person I cried to was my parents mm-hmm. when I lost my job, mm-hmm. so that was like the last time. But even before that, I'm just like, man, I mean, like I've watched a couple of TV shows and, and bawled my eyes out when certain things happen. Originals, f y'all, because <laughs> man, bro, <laughs> hey. Hey, I'm rewatching, it. I'm rewatching it right now. That's too, a so. pass. Right, break. Yeah. That's a pass. The last episode of the originals, talk, it broke me down. Talk, okay. talk about breaking all masculine wall. Nah, <laughs> nah bro. I'm, I'm, I'm not rewatching the last episode. Though. Bro, <laughs> Abu, who, I'm a hey. Grey's Anatomy, season six, I'm episode twenty three and twenty four. Hospital shooting. I would never. I watched it once. I would never watch it again. Her eyes are watery now. <laughs> they are. Yeah, get a little so red. Sad. Yeah, she's about to cry, guys. <laughs> This is real. Anyway, y'all need to watch, need to watch 911. I refuse. There's, there's, I feel like I'm missing tsunami, out. There's a tsunami episode, boy. Nope. And, and he's and he's he's whole, he has his best friend's kid. They went out for the the uh, went on they went Jersey Shore for the pier, and they, he lost that kid. He was special needs kid too. Oh, oh no! My. He kept he kept saving again. Like I'm sorry. This dude was on a truck. He saved about twelve people. He kept thinking it was he kept thinking it was him. Yank another dude out. She she hurt. Yank another dude out. Yank out dead bodies. And you're just like, and he was gone for so long, bro. It's an hour episode. They found. Ooh. Nah, Ooh. Nope, can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> but go Emma, ahead, go Emma, ahead. Emma, 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 <laughs> but and like you know, it really makes me think about it because like, and I, I don't show a lot of emotion to a lot of people. Like to a, a select few people, they'll know more about me emotionally than others. So like the guys in this room, even though they haven't really seen all my emotions, they've seen the ones that are more common to the ones that the people that are important to me. But you know, I, I have because I'm broken. <laughs> But and like I come from a two parent home, so I have both my mom and my dad. I've had them my entire life. But I can even f- sympathize with you on that side, Jeremy, because I think I was how old was I when I saw my mother cry for the very first time? It was like I think I was like a teenager right before I like right before I was getting mm-hmm. ready to go to college. Mm-hmm. So I was like at least 16, 17 years old. And like my, and, and my, my parents, especially my mother, is the most like toughest woman I know on this planet. I saw her break down and cry one time and it just, it just felt weird. I'm like, Are I don't see yeah, like, like, <laughs> what am know, I supposed to do? <laughs> and, and like, I have fluid coming from your face. Yeah. And yeah. I think I only recall my own father crying one time. And I think that's when his sister passed. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, I'm close to my parents and I love them to death, but it's like, even I coming from both sides of the spectrum, never really 
saw I, emotion. Not saw, yeah, not really saw like that level of emotion mm-hmm. other than like your casual happiness, anger, like, you know, right. the, the, the basics. Yeah. And that's just something that was like, I got comfortable with it to, for me and only me. And I generally shield that to everybody. And then as people get closer to me, then I open up a lot more and then I show more to other people. So, mm-hmm. so like, for me personally, it's, it's definitely a trust thing where it's like, mm. if I don't feel like I'm comfortable enough around you or trust you, and, and this, and this trust mm-hmm. issue comes with a lot of other things, mm-hmm. especially for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I don't feel that certain genuine trust around somebody, I'm going to have that shield in the Great Wall right. of China up always. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So w- how, when does that level of trust, when does that, well, that, not so much trust, but when does that guarding, when do you break that guarding down when it comes to being in a relationship? Because you have men who will be in a relationship for, you know, months or years and never really be vulnerable to the well, person that they're with. Well, and that's why I said I'm broken because me and Sujin had this conversation. I believe I probably we've had this conversation it's so for people that I don't care about, it's hard. I have to make myself get in. I have to make myself be emotions. Like normally outside of that, I can be real cold and mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I like, yes, this is, this is, I be friction talking. Yeah. This is, I be friction talking. <laughs> um, and Brittany, like uh, Mrs. I be friction. She's, um, she's tossing me and we, we probably put it there that maybe a defense mechanism. I don't know. Maybe I do, but like it's worked for me. I have the circle. Uh, I, I, show emotion too. And I have my wife, so I love my kids. So <laughs> I don't see any problem in it. So I'm just gonna keep on trucking. But it's a lot of times where like, if, if something sad happens in the world and people are heartbroken, I, I was like, look at them. Like, oh, that's messed up. Like, I mean, and I feel nothing. I will feel nothing from it. I think part of that is also being desensitized. Cause we do live in a world where something terrible happens every two but hours. Well, like with him, with him when we talked about it, I said, I think it comes from the situation with his dad. And how that played out and how he had to be vulnerable and be accepting to a situation that really didn't accept him, you know, not easily anyway. And as a kid, when that happens, you find a way to kind of not want to be hurt. Because when you get hurt by somebody that is supposed to blindly have that type of trust and thing, you know, that type of connection with when that person hurts you. That's a wrap. Like, you that, know, mm-mm. you, you not going to allow anyone else to hurt you, mm-hmm. whether they did it on purpose or not, you know, yeah. you've been hurt impact versus intent. So now it's like, well, I don't, I'm not caring about nothing. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah, cause even in our, and the reason I brought that up, because even when you talk about relationships is that it took me a while to get a, a softer side to tend to your needs in a relationship. Right. Because like any other time I would just look at you like, <laughs> I kid you not. He <laughs> told me one time, like, you know, what are you crying for? Like, yeah, what's the point of you crying? That ain't gonna do nothing. I understand that these emotions <laughs> you're giving. <laughs> Sharing, why are you perfect for human resources? <laughs> <laughs> perfect human resources. <laughs> and so, you know, he's right though. We've been together for what, 16 years? So it's like Damn. <laughs> Damn, son, where'd you find this? <laughs> On Black Planet. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I found it that's why I found well, it well anyway you know and for the first half of that it was a lot of getting him to just be softer towards me cause like Yuck. my man was hardcore and it was hard <laughs> yeah I uh you know what's crazy about that Jeremy's the one that made me learn how to communicate mm-hmm. going to my relationship with Emma He's like, if you're going to do this, <laughs> and he says it before, he's like, I come like, I don't think I'm gonna ask out. Like, be like, he's like, okay, don't. But if you're going to, do, I mean, not don't like do it, but he's like, don't do it unless you're going to do this, this, and this, and this, because this and this and this has been your problem the last two girls you've dated, seriously. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. And then I think I think he's tired of it because I'm like, I, we're talking about everything, everything. <laughs> oh, bro, you, you make me upset. You gonna know why I'm upset? Everything. Yeah. And if you're upset, you're not gonna tell me. Cool. I give you 15 minutes. Get the words. Get your words together and come back. Yep. Hey, episode yep. four. She got to be here. Man, can we yeah. talk? No, yeah, we need to talk. And about the reason that. I shared through the is because, like, I like I literally had to go through like a boot camp, and I'm like, no, oh no, bro, I can help you. This is what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, because you know how I was. You know, yeah. I, I would, bro, I would send old girl. You were nothing. It. She won't be named. I I send her home, bro. Like she get mad at me, and I'm just like, okay, you can go home. We all, I think we all at this table. I don't know, baby. You can you can colder as you get older. <laughs> It's so y'all fault. I'm gonna include you. Yes. And even Suchi and went on the line. We can nothing a thing. Oh. 
So easy. You're a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. You know. I like, gave her that nickname like 10 years ago. Boy. Yeah. I, I, I knew, boy. <laughs> like, you called it. Like, we get nothing a thing. And it's not intentionally to be hurtful, but it's uh-huh. like, I, I don't know. I don't know why our circle. I know for That it. saved our, a lot of our relationships, though. Being able to be that. Like, yeah. You know, because yeah. we've all butt heads to the point where we, it's been. Yeah. It's been about action a couple of times. Well, and I think to me, for me, <laughs> for me, it's to. <laughs> <laughs> we've, hey, some action's been thrown, people, and then this group. So, you know, this is yes. real love. Y'all don't understand. Well, yeah, and I know for me, it's, it's definitely to protect myself. If I nothing something, it's because I know it's, it's going to be bad news if I have to something it. And you don't want that, so <laughs> you, don't, you don't want me to put out. You really like if, don't. <laughs> if you, you if you remove yourself from the situation, the situation no longer exists. Well, no, no. Oh, well, that's a good mindset. Well, yeah, that's delete. Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos, that, Thanos that, snap. That's like that's like no, because that's like getting attacked by a shark, like, and you just turn away. It's like oh, that shark's not eating me. I'm okay. That oh, what's that sting? Oh, that's the that's. Oh my uh, it's like there, if you're gonna use the shark analogy, it's like you swimming with the shark, the shark is coming, you get in the boat and drive off. Like <laughs> you're gonna outrun a shark that's in, already in water. Well, okay. Anyway. <laughs> but no, I think there's a <laughs> there's a yourself? fine there's a fine line with that. Because nothing Full when here. you nothing something <sighs> There's a fine line because eventually, depending on who you do this to, it has to be addressed in some capacity. You can nothing something at first to kind of like, okay, let me get my head around the situation. Let me, you know, but eventually we're going to have to talk about this unless it's a mutual nothingness. Well, no, because if you, 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 you find out it hurts other people's feelings. Cause I mean, if we really, if we're going to be honest with everybody, two individuals within this group, Stop talking over something that was small and acted like it was nothing wrong. But it took one to be the bigger person because they realized something. It was me. It was it was stupid. Right. It's fine. Yeah. Because that applies to everybody. Well, yeah. Yeah. And all you. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? Dang, don't man, Sushi. That's the first time I heard something apply to everybody and just you at the same time. Oh man. (laughs) Yeah, because it wasn't even a bigger cause, person cause, in our situation. Because every time I butt heads everybody else, oh, we talked. We, <laughs> we it wasn't no talking. When we, me and Brittany got into it, we had a conversation. Yep. And we used a long conversation. And we we didn't talk for a day. <laughs> and then, you know, we went back to being okay. The next day, we understood each other. Yeah. I don't even know if we even squashed it. I just think we were just, we know you feel the way. I feel yeah, my way. That's what it was. And then was, we, that you know, was it. we just kept trucking, man. Never talk about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think my record's cleaner because the issues I had with y'all were just like one. One line conversations. Just like, it was in the beginning of our relationship. It was, yeah, it was super early. So we, we haven't had it. We you haven't had it. Well, me and you had like, we have a. We had petty. a. We had handful <laughs> ones, but they were like, but like I said, they were just simple. And, uh, and I admit, most of them are fault. <laughs> I, I, most of them, I, 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 yeah. I, I, I like to hit the button. And then once I realize the button's been hit, I'm just tapping it. <laughs> I'm firing away. And here's an example of how petty I am. So I found this man. With these giant nipples, man. <laughs> these, I mean, abstainly ups, ups, huge nipples. Oh. And that's, in my defense, I sent it to everybody. Everybody got the nipples. You know, people handled it differently. Brendan didn't handle it. He was very upset. <laughs> so he blocked me. <laughs> on, I, couldn't, I couldn't text him anymore. So I'm like, okay, fine. I went to his Facebook page. And I started posting the picture over and over and over. It got, I posted about 15 times before he caught on. He started deleting them. And then to, to fix it, he deleted me on Facebook, Instagram, and, and, so, and Snapchat. Yeah. And at least everybody else didn't get that old lady. I got it too. Oh, no, he, the no, no, I got the old that's what that's what that's why I blocked him. Because oh, I got the old, old lady. lady you sent me no, you sent me the nipples first, but then the old lady was a straw that broke. That was the that was the line. <laughs> that was nipples just, were like, all right. But also in, push you get in our defense, I wasn't really mad at you. It was just a funny thing to it do. It was just funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew he wasn't mad. There but. were two Facebook messenger groups. It got so petty, there were two Facebook messenger groups. <laughs> Brendan kicked them out the family one that we have, and then Torrance created another <laughs> one, invited everybody but Brendan, and I literally had to talk between both of them to get them back in the same page. I'm like, I'm not doing, I'm not answering to to chat. If y'all don't stop this right now, you know what's the crazy part about that? Instead of deleting the second check, I just added them. <laughs> so, just, so did you still win? Did you still win? I don't know who wins. Who needs to win? Even the battle's great, man. <laughs> um, right. But to get back on subject, um, along the lines of Brendan. 
uh, my mother was like, I don't, ha- I didn't have a father figure. I had my grandfather, and my grandfather was a gangster. <laughs> oh, man. This man, my grand, my, my grandfather, and of course, care my grandfather is. He's only like five three, five four, but he might be the scariest man in the room. I mean, you know, like he, he'll, he'll invoke fear. Like uh, this is a small story, just so I can get, so I can, uh, people understand what I'm talking about. He, um, someone stole one of his puppies. He's seventy at the time, sixty eight. It was a bunch of, uh, you know, niggas from down the street. On the porch with the puppy, about six, seven of them. He takes my twelve-year-old nephew with him. He hops out of the car, goes into their yard, walks onto the front porch. I'm talking about these like grown, like these, you know, these niggas. <laughs> he yanks the puppy, says, "Stop fucking with me." <laughs> he walks out of the yard, gets back in the car, and drives away. He only lives two blocks away, so they know where he, like, he's like. He gave he, my grandfather gives zero fucks. <laughs> he, he he and like the way about the way what, like what I learned a lot about him though. He was heavy on education. You know, he come from Alabama. He rode a motorcycle up or a car. I think it was a motorcycle up from Alabama to Chicago. He, like, you know, didn't have any place to stay. He just came up with, like, 20 bucks. Ended up, you know, putting all of, you know, his kids through college. And, you know, or the ones that don't go to college are still making hundreds of grand. You know, they're doing really well, you know, in whatever job they're doing. So he's really he pushed education very hard. But he also pushed, he, like, I'm not going to say he was, like, a toxic man. But he was very, like, you're going to be the baddest motherfucker in the room. You you're you're a Gavon. You are the you are the scariest person in the room. You're the best motherfucker. You're the smartest person. You this is and this. Like he's very big on self confidence. My mother was uh, <laughs> she. It, I don't know why, but none of that res- like resonated with her. <laughs> she's she's like the most laid back, like funny, like nice person I've ever met. And then I didn't know until she was older that she hates people. <laughs> so we and I like love it. I, I, I'm talking. We're in time. We're in uh, McDonald's uh, in the drive-through, and this lady gives my mom like takes my mom's car. She's like, my mom goes, "How you having? Like, how's your day going?" That's what my mom said. Lady, I'm talking. About, we had a f- ten minute conversation with this lady. This lady's crying, talking about how she can't afford to take her kids to college. I mean, all this just big, just just spewed it out, and it happened all the time to my mother. And I'm just like, my like, we does that bug you? She's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> she goes, Who am I to not let them feel? Do I care? No. <laughs> Is it wasting my time? Maybe. But who am I not to let them ki- not to let them feel? I, it doesn't it doesn't hurt me. So that's why when growing up, I've always been able to fake it if I needed to. I'm always open to listen. I'm always listening here. Like I'm, I'm broken. I don't care. But you know what? I'll, I'll play the role for you. I'll, I will, <laughs> I'll I will, I will fall into that role for you if you need it. If you need me to, then once we leave, I will never think about it again. <laughs> Everybody needs to show you, you know, even if there's a ghost. What? Okay. Everybody needs a shoulder to lean on, even if it is a ghost. He's a rapper, okay. guys. He just be saying stuff sometimes. Yeah. He, he's actually writing it down right now. <laughs> yep. He's like, ooh, man, it's going to be on the next line. <laughs> Probably in the studio trying to get a beat together for it. Before we change lanes and talk about something else, I want to say, I think my issue with the usage of toxic 